Okay, today I'm gonna to show you guys how to, to do a testing of the autopilot on the ground. Um, basically, we're gonna test as many things as we can on the autopilot functions uh, here on the ground connected to the little GPU that I have and uh, make sure everything is working. So let's start. First of all, I actually moved the throttles up out of the, uh, the cutoff position um, just so we could see a little bit better here. Whenever you do that, you wanna make sure that the boost bumps are in the off position or you could pull the circuit breakers or else it's gonna automatically sense uh, low fuel pressure and the boost pumps are gonna start kicking on. Uh, okay, so I have a list here and the first thing that we're gonna test is we're gonna pull the yoke back a little bit and we're just gonna turn on the autopilot and it's just gonna hold the yoke right there in this position. Um, we have the autopilot on and the yaw dampener actually went on with it, it always does. Uh, and there is absolutely no modes. So what the mode here right now is actually, is it is wings level mode, and it is uh, also holding the existing pitch. Yoke, so again, if I disconnected it and I held it here, turn on the autopilot, it would hold it here. If I held the uh, yoke way up here, turn on the autopilot, it would just hold it here. So. We could uh, feel immediately that the servos are working and they're just holding this yoke and it's nice and sturdy. I can't really do much with it. Um, as a side note, obviously I could overpower it and that's by, with, with, my, with my force of my arms and hands and that's by design. I, I should be able to, to uh, overpower the servos that are turning the, the ailerons and the elevator. Okay, so the next test we have is the heading mode. So as soon as I hit a heading mode, as soon as I hit the heading mode here, uh, the flight director is gonna pop right up. And right now I have, and I control the heading bug with this button down here, and it'll happen here on my HSI. So I could turn it left and to the right. And I know you guys can't see it very well, but there is a little yellow bug that I'm turning just directly from here. So right now I'll put the bug exactly in my current heading of, uh, zero seven zero and i'm going to turn on heading mode so heading mode turns green and right now what i and and we got the flight director which you guys could probably not see very well but there's a tiny little carrot right on top of it and what i'll do is i'm going to turn the heading bug to the left which is moving my yoke to the left and the flight director is pitching over is is suggesting to turn to the left and then i'll do the same thing to a turn to the right. And the flight director is suggesting suggesting a turn to the right, and there goes my yokes, and then we'll put it back to center. So that's the um, heading bug uh, test of heading mode. And then now we have the turn and, uh, turn and bank knob. We rarely, I've never used this in flight. I'm not sure anybody ever would. Uh, but let's say you're flying over an airport VFR at 4,000 feet. You want to um, look around, you want to do some testing, and you just want that airplane just doing 360s. So all you have to do is turn this. So if I want to do left turns, I'll just turn this to the left. And did you see what happened here? Heading mode was on in our current heading, and I turn this and it'll turn off heading mode automatically. Boom, heading mode's gone, and then now I could turn it. Now I could do a slow bank to the left, a shallow bank, or I could do a steep bank to the left and then also to the right, okay? Now, there is a detent right here in the middle and it's very important that when you do the cabin uh, uh, inspection before you even get the clearance and everything before you start the engines to, to make sure this is the detent because right now we can't really do much with the autopilot. Heading mode doesn't work so nav mode won't work so this has to be at the detent i'll tell you guys a quick story i was flying to vegas and my wife and my son were back there there and uh we were a cruise and uh, i turned around to take a quick picture of them and somehow i turned this i i got it out of detent and turned actually i didn't even turn it i just took it out of detent um enough to keep the wings level but also out of detent enough to take it out of my current nav mode and after i took my picture i'm still flying straight ahead and it was holding my my uh existing um um 
bank, which is zero. And then all of a sudden I started noticing that the HSI, the CDI needle is like starting to drift off. And I was like, what is happening? And then I look at my nav and it's off. So I said, how? Oh, maybe I pressed it by accident. You know, it's an old plane, who knows? So I go to turn it on and nothing happens. Like heading mode, nothing happens, nothing happens. And I was like, what is happening? What is happening? And uh, then after a couple of, so I actually uh, kicked off the autopilot just momentarily and uh, and then to get back on course. And then I shortly figured out that this was off the detent. So that's a quick story. Um, so that's the turn knob. Um, we're gonna do a, we're gonna, we're gonna test the nav feature of the airplane. Uh, right now I have the heading bug in, um, on, uh, on my current heading, uh, but altitude select is on. I hope you guys could see the, my HSI right here and my flight director will show up here. I'm in uh, autopilot's on and, and my uh, altitude hold is on, uh, which is nice because it'll keep the yoke at this position. So hopefully you guys could see this. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm using the VOT here, the VOR test facility at Hillsborough at 115.2 uh, at VLOC mode. So it's a VOR mode. And um, I'm really happy that they opened up the hangar or else I wouldn't be able to get um, reception here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna arm nav mode and, and we know that the VOT is gonna lie, it's gonna center the needle at 360 or 180. So uh, right now I have it set at, let's set it at the course of 030, so the needle is off to the right. And what will happen is when I press nav, is there is nothing for it to capture because the needle is so far gone. Um, so it's gonna automatically arm heading mode. It's gonna actually automatically select heading mode and then it will arm nav. And heading mode is, is in my uh, current heading. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's nav. So nav got armed, it's orange, and then heading is on. And now if I move the course closer and closer to 360, it's gonna move that needle in. And at some point the heading mode's gonna go away and then the nav mode is going to turn green. It's going to capture and then it's going to say, hey, we got to turn left. So here we go. 15 degrees, 10 degrees, 9, 8, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2. There it is. And now it went to capture on the nav. It's turning left. And the needle is centered and it's trying to capture that needle. Now, if I move it, if I, if I force the needle to move to the right by turning it, to back to, we could even turn it to a 040. You'll see that the autopilot now is saying, look, I'm still capturing this nav mode, but the needle is so far to the right, I really need to turn right. So that's the nav mode test. The next one we have is the altitude hold. So let's see, let me read real quick. I don't wanna bore you guys. Altitude hold, uh, watch, yoke, hold, yoke, steady. Okay, so altitude hold is I'm, holding my existing altitude. The existing altitude is here is 220 feet. So what I'm gonna do with altitude hold is we're gonna simulate as if the airplane for some reason started getting a little bit below altitude. So what I'll do is I'll adjust the altimeter setting and I'll lower, I'll artificially lower our altitude and watch the yoke and the yoke is pulling back to come back up and now I'll actually raise our altitude above the captured altitude and it's gonna push forward. So remember when I turned the altitude mode on, we're at 220 feet. So anytime I deviate from 220 feet, if I go down to 180, it's gonna say, hey, we need to pull up to get to 220. If I go to 250 or 260, it's gonna push forward to try to get back to the 220. So that's altitude hold. Okay, so the next feature to check is the altitude select and the altitude pre-select. So basically what that does is I selected this to 500 feet. So as we climb from 200 feet up to 500, um, it should actually automatically capture that 500 feet that we set. So what we're gonna do is do altitude select and we're gonna raise, artificially raise our altitude up to 500. And you saw that it captured altitude mode. So it went to the altitude pre-select which was orange went away and as soon as I raised it up to about 500 feet it captured the altitude so that's the next test um, um, okay and we watch that do it in real life what's gonna happen here is it's gonna actually go altitude select 
and then it's gonna say, once it gets close to the altitude that we want, it's gonna say capture on it. And then once we get right to the altitude that we selected, it's gonna say out. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, oh, let me change it. It's gonna be armed, then capture in green, and then it's gonna ch change to altitude on. Um, next, uh, test nav intercept from heading mode with some VR. We just, I did that a little bit earlier. Test on the autopilot using pitch mode and move yoke up and down. Okay, perfect. Um, so right now we're flying, uh, no altitude select, uh, just we're in pitch mode. So what I use is this pitch wheel to lower the yoke and raise and, and pull back the yoke. So lower the nose and raise the nose. The next thing that I like to do is resist this motion. So I'm gonna push, I'm gonna say, look, uh, autopilot, I want you to pitch down, but I'm not gonna let it with a yoke. I'm gonna hold it in place. And the servos are gonna actually notice that they're unable to do it. So it's gonna do one, of, it's gonna do two things. It's gonna start pitching down. So we're testing the, the electric pitch trim uh, for the elevator. And then I'm gonna keep holding it and the autopilot's gonna start complaining now saying, look, something's really wrong. And then we're gonna have this trim light turn on. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna pitch down, I'm holding it. It's quite a bit of pressure. I'm expecting this to start turning, there it goes. And here's the trim mismatch light. So it's saying something's wrong. Now we could do it. Now if I relieve the pressure, now it's saying, oh, okay, cool, I got there. Now I could do it the other way. I could pitch up. I'm gonna push forward and not let it pitch up. Now it's trying to trim up, and I got the trim uh, up um, miscompare light there. Cool. Let me turn it off. Turn it back on. What's the next thing? Um, autopilot test button. So when the autopilot is um, on, there is a test button for the for the torques of the, the torque limiters of the servos. So we press that, and that also disconnects the autopilot. We're supposed to have a chime uh, with this and I'm um, calling my avionics guy to find out why it's not there. It's, it's been a little bit intermittent. For the most part, it's been, I'm getting the chime, but today I'm not, so. Um, next thing I wanna test is the autopilot disconnect button. So I have one right here and I'm gonna test the co-pilot's disconnect button. And there you go, it turns off the autopilot and it turns off the yaw damp with it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here on the left side and it disconnected. So that's one way to disconnect. So basically we're gonna run through all the different ways to disconnect the autopilot. I wanna have all the possibilities to disconnect it in, in, in case it's trying to kill me during the flight. Uh, trim to disconnect. So this is a great way to do it. If you wanna start hand flying, you're, you're in the approach phase or on a final approach fix and you wanna hand fly, but you wanna, um, but you wanna keep the yaw damp on because disconnecting the autopilot turns off the yaw dampener. So what you wanna do is we have the yaw damp on and all I have to do is trim. If I trim, the autopilot should go away, but it'll also leave my yaw damper on. So let's try that, trim down, there it is. And yaw damper is still there and I could trim the other way, and it's still there. Perfect. My next test. Okay, so we did trim to disconnect, turn on the yaw dampener and have somebody shake the tail. So this is a pretty cool test. Um, the autopilot's on, or I could trim to just leave the yaw damp on, but if I have somebody go out there and I have my feet on the rudders here, on the rudder pedals. If I have somebody go back there and just shake the tail from side to side a little bit, I'll be feeling it correct here in the in the rudder pedals because there's a servo attached to them. So it'll be trying to, to counteract that motion. And you could possibly just do it alone back there by shaking the tail back and forth from left to right. And we might be able to see the, the rudder twitch uh, from right to left as it's trying to counteract that motion. Uh, test the pinch, pitch sync button on the yoke, which will disconnect all autopilot servos. Right, so for flying along, we're climbing, and all of a sudden I wanna take over. Um, I wanna fly the plane for, for five seconds, for some whatever reason. It's actually, there are many reasons you would want to. 
Uh, but I don't want to turn off the autopilot. I want to just disconnect it and put everything back where it was instantly. So we got this autopilot temporary disconnect button here and uh, heading mode, altitude, and I could hit it. And right now all these modes stayed. I could fly the airplane with my hand and then I could let go and it's gonna go back to what it was supposed to be doing before. So that's working. Uh, test the autopilot circuit breakers. Um, last ditch resort to turn off the autopilot. So we have all these ways to turn off the autopilot, right? We could disconnect with a, with a autopilot uh, trim disconnect. We could disconnect the autopilot with a trim. I can turn off the inverters in, because the, uh, the autopilot's running off the inverter power, which is different than 28 volts. Uh, but I also have a collared uh, circuit breaker over there and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it real quick. And there you go, it just gave up, it's gone. The autopilot's gone. Um, let's see. Test the elevator trim circuit breaker. Okay, cool. There's one more test that you do is we trim, uh, this is not really, it is kind of an autopilot test, but I could trim down and then I could hold the disconnect and it should stop this action. So I'm trimming disconnect. Actually, this went really far. So I'm gonna trim up. Perfect, everything's good. And I should be able to hit this red button and it should stop everything. So if I have this situation called like a runaway trim where the uh, trim electric trim servo got possessed by the devil and now it wants to pitch up and it wants to stall me uh, because I've been a bad boy. So it's gonna do this all by itself. I'm not doing it. I wanna make sure that if I click on this red button, I stopped it. I stopped it, okay? Now, another thing that we could do is collar the pitch trim servo. So again, I could, on the circuit breaker. So I'm gonna trim down, 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 and I could kill it like this. So again, autopilot uh, trim uh, motor here is possessed. It wants to crash me. It's pitching up, pitching up, pitching up. I'm gonna hit this red button, the autopilot trim disconnect. It's gonna stop that, but now I'm gonna have to hold it for the remainder of the flight. That's unacceptable. If I let go, who knows what it might be doing. So right now I wanna to go to my collared uh, circuit breaker for, for the pitch trim and just um, give it a nice good death to uh, by, by, by lack of electricity to that uh, electric motor here that controls that. Okay, well, I hope that uh, this helped. Uh, I, I personally run these autopilot checks on the ground here connected to the GPU like once a month. Um, I, I just run all these tests real quick. It takes just, just 30 seconds. I could just bust through them very quickly. And I do that when I'm here updating my GPS um, little SIM card there for the 530 and do my VOR check. So I might as well just turn everything on and run through all the uh, autopilot um, tests. So thanks for watching.